Hello, welcome to this tutorial on Filter Plot and Explore in Python. My name is Morgan Howells. I'm studying computer science at the Open University. And I've been working with Galaxy for about a year. Uh, the purpose of this video is to walk you through the tutorial and show you all the interactive elements. Uh, this video isn't designed to explain step by step what's happening because all information is already present in the tutorial. But instead, this video is kind of just in case you get stuck using the Galaxy interface or JupyterLab. So for today, I'll be using the single cell Galaxy server uh, because I may do single cell analysis, but any of the servers will work, .u, .org, any of them will work for today, um, it won't matter. So I already have a history created here. So we just need to open up um, the Galaxy Train Network tutorial. So we can either do that in the separate Galaxy Train Network website, or we can use tutorial mode in Galaxy. So if you click on this icon here, it opens up um, the GTM website in uh, our same tab. We can then scroll down and go to single cell. And then we can locate our tutorial that we'll be going through today. So that's this one here. And uh, yeah, we can do the first step. So the first step will be to uh, load in our data. So we can go and copy. If we just click outside of the window, that will take us back to our Galaxy instance. We can then go to upload, paste and fetch data, and we can paste in our link. Then we click start, and then it goes green. We can close this window, and we can see it appears in our um, history. So current is green, that means it's waiting to run. Once it turns orange, that means the data will be loading into Galaxy. And then green means um, the data is fully loaded. Load. Okay, so the data is now loaded. So the next step is to check the format. So if we look in the tutorial, we can see that the format needs to be H5AD. And we can go ahead here and see that the format is correct. It's H5AD. In case it's incorrect, we can click on this pencil icon. We can go to data types, and then we can select our data type from this drop down list. Um, once you selected it, make sure to click save and that will change the format, but we don't need to do that because it's already correct. Um, okay, so the next step is to launch JupyterLab. So we can just search up the tool in the search bar here. So we have interactive Jupyter Notebook, click on that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and click on versions here, change it to version 1.0.0. .0 .0. This version of the tool uh, is kind of having some issues and not working correctly, so we're going to use an older version. Other than that, we don't need to change anything, so we can go ahead and just run tool. And that creates three new elements in our history, uh, which are currently gray. Um, we want to wait for them to turn orange. We don't want to wait for them to turn green, because basically JupyterLab is running in the background, and so it only turns green once that software stops running. So we actually want it to continually run, so we want to wait for it to be orange. So now we can see it's orange, so it's now running. So we can access JupyterLab by going up to User, uh, Active Interactive Tools, and then we can have our list of our interactive tools. So we can see um, our JupyterLab here. Uh, the job info shows it's running, and it was created less than a minute ago, so this is the correct one. So we can go ahead and click on this link. Now we'll open up a new tab that will launch um, JupyterLab for us. So now we just wait for that to load. Ah, so, okay, so we have uh, JupyterLab here. We can create a new notebook. Under the notebook section, we can click on Python 3. That will generate a new notebook for us. We can go up here and we can change, uh, rename the name of the notebook. Uh, we have our code cells. We can click on this button to create uh, new code cells. So if we go to the tutorial, we can look at the first code cell here. Click copy, and then we can paste that in. And then we can run that code cell with the run icon here. You can see this little star indicates that the code cell is running. Once it turns into a number, that means that it has uh, run. We can also see this little icon up here in the tab that shows that the notebook is currently running. So now it's a one, we can see that it's fully run. 
Yeah, so now we can just go through and step by step copy each um, code block here, paste it into the Jupyter, uh, our Jupyter notebook here. But this video is going to be a little bit slow, so you can do that, but we have a quicker method. So if we go up to the top of the tutorial, we can see this link here, Jupyter Notebook. Clicking on that will download a pre-made Jupyter Notebook on your computer. Uh, this notebook will be generated from the tutorial, so we'll have all the same information as the tutorial, just in the form of a notebook. So yeah, so if you click on that, that will download that. I already have it downloaded, so we can go switch back to Jupyter Lab. We can then uh, select our file and drag and drop it into our left panel here. Now then load the notebook. We click on it. Sometimes if you click on it too fast, I think because the notebook is too large or it's quite big, so it, it takes a couple seconds to load. So sometimes you get this error. But don't worry, this isn't anything to be concerned about. We can just dismiss, discard that, and then just reopen it up. So if you if you um, wait a couple of seconds before opening it, you probably won't have the error. But yeah, there's nothing uh, to worry about. So once we open it up, we can see uh, we have a prompt to select our kernel. So this is basically just the different types of programming languages that we can use. So we have a big list here, but we're going to stick with the default Python 3 for today. Select. And so yeah, so now we have our tutorial uh, in the form of a notebook. So we can see that this contains all the same information as our original tutorial, but now it's just in a Jupyter notebook. So we have to copy and paste a bunch of stuff. So we can go through each cell and we can click on run to run it. So we can go through each one and just click run. But this is a little bit slow again. So we have uh, another way of speeding this up. If we go ahead to the run tab here, we can then click run all cells. So that will automatically run every single code block in this notebook. We can also select a specific um, code block here and then we can either um, run the selected cell and everything below it, or we can run everything above that selected cell. So in this uh, situation, since we've already run these two, we don't need to rerun them, so we can just start from here. Um, so before running all the cells, one thing to note is that this get function here is specific to Galaxy, and it will fetch in data from our history. So we go back over to our history here, we can see that our AND data file is in location one, as marked by this number here. So we want to make sure this number is matching our input. So currently it is, this is one, and in Jupyter Lab we can see this is one as well. So that's perfectly fine. But if you're using data in a different part of the history, that number might be different. So you have to make sure to change that number. But anyway, we can go to run, we can click run all cells. And that will then run all these cells. So you can see they all have the little asterisks next to them, means they're waiting to run or they're currently running. And then each one sequentially will run one after the other. Um, so yeah, so now we just have to wait for different tools to run. Like I said, we can also see up here the little symbol that shows that things are still running. So we can go ahead and go off it. We can see that there is still stuff running in the background if we want to wait for things to run. Um, so, yep, as you can see, we already have some violin plots for our quality control. We do have some of these big red blocks here. These are just warnings because um, this package is using some like outdated parameters, but we don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, it's only a warning, there's no errors, so we can just ignore that. Yeah, we can see all of our cool plots, um, lots of different data to analyze. If we go all the way down, we'll see that it's currently um, on this tool. Oh, it's actually quite fast. Yeah, so we have our neighbors tool. Uh, this will probably take a while to run because it has to do a lot of computation. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut the video and come back when all the cells have run. Okay, so now um, all of our code cells have run. So you can see we've all, they've all run. We can go down. We can see we have all different output tables. Um, all different plots and clusters, and lots of different data that we can analyze. Um, once all this data has been analyzed and gone through along with the tutorial, the last step will be to save the data back into Galaxy. So we can do that with these um, code cells here. So this adata.write will write our AND data file into um, JupyterLab, so we can see markers clusters.h5ad is here. 
we can then um, move that file from here into our galaxy history with the put command. So using put and um, making sure we have the same file name that's found here, puts that into galaxy. We go back in galaxy, we can actually see since that code cell's already run, we can see our final AND data file has been pre-processed and everything is back into um, Galaxy. We can also save the notebook itself uh, with this. This is an error since this isn't the correct name. So if we go here, we can rename the notebook. We can copy it. And then we can paste it. Uh, we want to add dot pi and b. And then we can go ahead and run that cell. Oh, that didn't work. Run. No. that we can see that saves and if we go into our history we can see that's now saving in our galaxy history basically the importance of doing this is that once jupyter lab is closed um, all this data we have here is lost so it's really important that every time we run stuff any sort of data or the notebook or any images which we'll show in a second once that run uh, once we get that data we want to make sure we either save it locally so you can actually click on this and click download, or we want to make sure it's saved into um, Galaxy using the put command. So the last thing to save will be figures. So if we look in here, we can see we have a big list of figures. So these are all saved um, from earlier tools. So we can see this save um, parameter here, save this figure, and then we can find um, our figures here. So we double click on that, we can see we have our figures. So we simply want, if we want to save um, these images, we just need to copy the file name. And then just put that in here. So figures dash whatever our file name is, we can just get rid of these. And then if we go ahead and run this code cell, that will that's run. Then we go here and we can see that our image will be saved into our history. And we can do that for all the different images or whatever images are important. Um, and yeah, and that is then everything. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope that this was useful.